at Harvey Station. We're in the David McMullen Gymnasium as we have the number two seed from the south, the Campobello Island Consolidated School Vikings, taking on the number three seed from the west, the John Caldwell School Golden Knights. Uh, these two teams, as far as we know, did not face off in the regular season. We don't have any results if they did from exhibition tournaments and different divisions they wouldn't have played each other. So. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Bello is a little, it's a little far uh, to get up and, and, and get out there. And John Caldwell all the way up in Grand Falls. So there is a fair amount of kilometers between these two teams. So looking forward to a good game. Campobello finished 8-2 and two in their regular season. John Caldwell finishing, uh, I believe, 6-4. and four. As we'll get the balls checked here by referee Rashida Atkinson. She's going to pass that over to her partner Rod Obey. Big thanks to both our officials tonight. As it looks like it'll be uh, number 12 Eden Searles and I think that's number 4 Alyssa Sullivan taking the tip off. Both grade 11 players. Play is whistled in and uh, it's Finally, the Golden Knights taking over. Kate Toner. Ball passed across to Jenna McCarthy. Sullivan on the inside, but that pass misfires. That goes out of bounds. So first attack goes nowhere, and it's Campobello. Looking for the first points. It's Marissa Calder, the sole grade 12 student on this Campobello team, bringing the ball up. Finds Sophie Mitchell back to Calder. And, uh, oh, we don't have a number nine on our roster, so we'll have to do a quick process of elimination to find out who number nine on Camp Campobello is. Looks like we might have been given an out-of-date yeah, roster. I think we seem to be missing, if I'm correct, two players that they have on in, the, uh, yeah. well, in their team now mm -hmm. from our roster. So. I don't see a number ten... Maya Jackson out there. We've got seven on the roster and seven here with the five on the court and on the bench. So I'm going to go ahead and say that number nine oh, is indeed Maya Jackson. And Islanders take over, still scoreless here in the first. Eden Searles calling for a pick. Calder looks to set one, but the ball gets out to Jackson. Jackson shoots a three. That will bounce chest out. And it's the Golden Knights taking over. Hayden Dion driving through and that shot falls out of bounds. Referee Obey giving the ball over to the Islanders. Or check that, the uh, Vikings. I had this problem last time too. Always want to say the Islanders for Campobello Island, but that's not actually their name. Now the winner here will go on to face the number one seed in the West, which is Southern Victoria. They are also the Vikings. So we could have a Vikings on Vikings matchup. Although not if John Caldwell has anything to say about it. Here's Kate Toner. Passes out to Jenny McCarthy, Jenna McCarthy rather. And ball bounces out off the hands of a Golden Knight. See coach Aaron McLaughlin cheering his squad on after that attack. Still scoreless here. It's one and a half minutes have elapsed. Jackson back to Calder at the top of the circle. Calder looking around, doesn't like what she sees, drives in, nice spin move to get into the paint. She shoots from mid range and it's good. So Marissa Calder is first to strike. And here's Jenna McCarthy. Whistle now. As the last time the uh, Campobello Vikings were here, it was Maya Jackson and Eden Searles leading the way with uh, almost 20 points apiece. We'll see if they can get going now. Here's Jackson again, looking inside. Calder with the turn and shoot. That's no good, and the Knights have it. They trail by two, and we got a foul. As it's Rashida Atkinson making that call. Looks like number four, uh, Marissa Calder, the guilty party on Capabello. Though it has been uh, the Vikings who are able to pull away with those two points, it's been pretty evenly matched otherwise. A very back and forth game. They're not, they're definitely not right away from their sides. They, mm -hmm. It's more the clock just almost runs out and it's stolen. But Yeah, yeah, neither team really getting a grade-A chance. It's kind of... No, a lot of, I haven't 
haven't seen many of the teams other than that one shot there. Where, um, was that? Uh, that it was, was uh, Calder with the yes. with the points um, there. Where she was able to get un basically sort of close to the net, but not even really that much. They've been pretty far away from their net. There's Calder with a three-point attempt, but that bounces out. And here it's Hayden Dion streaking down the other way. She finds number four, Alyssa Sullivan, on the inside. And now we're all tied up. This game starts to pick up the pace a little bit. Jackson to Calder, back inside to Jackson. Jackson outside now. Kate Toner with some good defense there as the ball fumbled out to Jackson. Looking around, swung it outside to number 12, Eden Searles. She takes a shot, and that bounces just out. And it's Campobello maintaining possession. So three minutes gone here in the first quarter. Not much in the way of big offensive chances. Both teams playing well in their own end, defending the paint. Neither team really getting too aggressive on three points, but there's an attempt from Searles. That's no good, but that might be the key to getting these offenses going. Searles can't quite break through. Nice work by Annie Morrison standing her up. Morrison with the long pass up to Dion now. All the way across to Jenna McCarthy. It's Sullivan on the inside. She's got the two points for the Golden Knights so far, but can't get another couple. Sophie Mitchell dumps it back to Calder. Calder outside to Searle. Searles with a nice fake. Driving in now from short range, and it's good for two. There's another couple of points for Eden Searles. One of the older players on this Campobello team. They've got Marissa Calder in grade 12, Eden Searles and Bree Williams in grade 11 and then a couple of grade 10s and grade 9s to round out their roster. They have a pretty small roster too. Yeah, yeah, only seven. Looking at the game sheet from last time, looks like they brought nine when they came to play against Harvey, so might have a couple of injuries, a couple of players unable to make yeah. it, which is rough as player goes down hard there. That's, uh, I think that's possibly Jolene McCarthy. But... Or possibly Jenna McCarthy. I think that is Jenna McCarthy. Uh, she Number gets up three. on her own strength, which is good. Hopefully it's just more of a impact banged up on her knees and yeah. she can stretch it out. Yeah. She seems to be walking, so I couldn't... I yep. Can't say that it would be too deep of a hit, but no, no, it didn't. No, no twisting or anything no, like that. I think so I think it's just impact. So hopefully she probably should be better better later on in the game. We yeah. hope because she we'll is a very good player. Cross our fingers there for sure. Toner looking inside to Sullivan, and there's a couple more. So the Golden Knights able to keep some momentum here. Here's Calder looking to respond back to Jackson. Dumps it outside to Bree Williams, who takes a long-range shot. That's no good, though. Dion looking around, but it's blocked. Williams has it again. Williams gets it outside to Searles. Searles, the good fake again. Takes a couple steps. Lobs it in underhand, but that goes just over the net. Kate Toner with the high pass up for Dion. Dion over to Maria Toner. Looking for three, and it's no good. And Sullivan will tip that out of bounds. So Vikings will take over. About halfway through the first quarter now, and we'll remind you, this is game one of regionals. And winner here will play again at 12 p.m. tomorrow. They're going to play the number one seed in the West, who are the Southern Victoria Vikings. 10-0 team, very strong competitor. They are the defending single-A champions, so whoever wins here will have their work cut out for them. Definitely, Lo yeah. Loser here will be eliminated, so this is a do-or-die moment for these teams. Calder will go to the line. Looks like it's uh, Alyssa Sullivan, the guilty party, and Calder's first shot is good. She went one for two last time she was in this gym. Let's see if she can beat that record as it falls out, but I think we had an early, uh, an early step forward by one of the Vikings, so it might not have counted. And yeah, Rod Obey bringing the ball over the sideline, so I think that Shot was dead anyways. As Obey just going over a few things with uh, Hayden Dion over there, maybe explaining what's up. And here is Annie Morrison bringing the ball over. Finds Maria Toner. Toner over to Dion. Over to Annie Morrison, who's going to dribble into the paint. She has a decent shot, but that will not go. Vikings take over. It's Eden Searles bringing the ball up. 
Searles had 16 points last time she was here against the Lakers. Only two so far tonight, but Vikings would love to get her going. As here comes Marissa Calder. Calder over the line, finds Williams. Back outside to Jackson for a nice three-point attempt. Nice set play there by the Vikings as Searles puts that off a defender to maintain possession. Good hustle by Searles who, sacrificing the body there, she went hard into the, into the gym wall. As Williams gets it outside to Jackson. Back to Searles who calls for a bit of protection there. Don't know if she got what she was looking for as Bit of confusion, but Williams has it. Outside to Jackson. Jackson shooting for three. And that falls just out of bounds. You can hear some of the crowd here who made the trip from Campobello. Disappointed in that as Dion evades the defender. Gets it over to Kate Toner for a nice attempt. And that's going to be another foul by Marissa Calder. And her second. Third foul for the Islanders. I must have missed one earlier. Not sure who had it, but only the second for Marissa Calder. And shot by Kate Toner does go in, so the Golden Knights are successful in their first attempt from the line. And Searles again jumped the gun a little bit by I think she had momentum. Yeah. Yeah, let Toner take the free shot. And here's the other one now. And that goes in clean. So Toner effectively two for two. As we've got a substitution, Madison Ryu has checked into the game. One of two grade 12 players for Aaron McLaughlin's squad out of Grand Falls. Here's Jackson. Back to Calder. Calder, she's been kind of quarterbacking the offense here. Gets it over to Searles. Searles has been coming on with a lot of shots lately. Hasn't quite converted, and that's stolen by Hayden Dion. Nice work by Dion reaching in there to pluck that ball away. Although I guess cause a jump ball would be more accurate because it looks like the Vikings are still hanging on to possession. Yeah. Still was able to break up whatever they were trying to plan there. Mm -hmm. Now they only have under 10 seconds left. Yeah, anytime you can disrupt the attack like that, it's... Uh, it's a, it's a good thing for your defenses. Nice work by Annie Morrison as she came in with speed. So we got a whistle here, and timeout is called by Campobello. So coaches Julie Sanders and Jeremy Mills are going to go over things with their team. Yeah, John Caldwell definitely able to break ahead, especially off of the... Three fouls that yeah. Campobello now has for their team. Though there's only just a bit over three minutes left in this quarter. So there's, mm -hmm. if they do go into foul trouble, there's really no huge risk. It could yeah. still pose a threat to their team, seeing as they do uh, cause a lot of fouls. I think that's the issue you're looking yeah. at. Not necessarily in this quarter, but long term, especially when you only have seven girls who are dressed and, uh, and present yes, to play tonight. Exactly. Um, and yeah, they, I don't think we've seen a single substitution for the Vikings yet. No. Now, to be fair, the Golden Knights haven't really done it either. These are the playoffs. You put your best five on the court and, uh, and cross your fingers. But depth can be important, as we yep. already saw Jenna McCarthy from the Golden Knights take a hard fall, and she's out for at least a little while. And if I'm looking right, would those numbers on those... Uh little banners be correct for uh that's the, the seed yep yeah, yep yeah. so technically so technically john caldwell is behind campobello as they are the lower seed yeah but they were miraculously able to pull ahead yeah yeah they're doing well now definitely Di having a deeper bench is really something that you want to have that is important in different divisions as well so <laughs> sometimes yeah. these results get kind of thrown out it's nice steal by hayden d on there she comes in with speed and gets this offensive chance. It's Annie Morrison streaking in. She had two points just a moment ago, and now she adds two more. It's the Golden Knights in double digits. Here's Calder looking to respond. Calder driving in. That ball flicked away. Eden Searles is there, but that's pushed away from her as well. 
as uh, Golden Knights just doing a great job disrupting. It's a three on one. Good patience for Maria Toner. And that goes just over the net. Sophie Mitchell has that for the Vikings. Here's Calder again, really keeping a close grip on that ball. And looks like she drew that foul. Annie Morrison, the guilty. Keeping only one foul up until this point is pretty impressive, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Especially we're seeing the Vikings drive more and more. Eden Searles has yeah. had a few drives into that, and they've definitely Calder getting in there. They definitely, both teams definitely didn't start off with a lot of momentum, but they've been able to pick it up. Both teams getting a little bit more aggressive on their defense and offense. And mm -hmm. That's always good to see, as long as you don't end up getting too many fouls. Exactly, especially with a shorter bench yeah. here at playoff time. This is not a time to be uh, praying no. that your depth <laughs> <laughs> that your depth comes through. Sullivan on the inside. She gets a nice drive. And Alyssa Sullivan has a couple more points. It's been Sullivan and Morrison with most of the points. Kate Toner adding a couple foul shots. As ball, I believe, was forced out of bounds there. Big thanks to the folks working behind the scenes up here in the booth. We've got Austin Jamison keeping that scoreboard up to date. Kevin Sheffers Roy is pointing you in the right direction with the camera. And Ashton Little is the one sitting at the console making all those big decisions. Uh, Kevin and uh, Ashton and a couple of other volunteers, Caleb Brewer, Holly Henry, and Riley DeMerchant were working hard before the game to set up our net cams. And I see that Ashton Little at console has gotten a couple of those worked into the broadcast already. So big thanks to them. Big thanks to our sponsors as well for making this all possible, allowing us to purchase that equipment. We'll shout them out a little later in the broadcast. Melee in the offensive zone for the Knights, but they don't come away with any points. And a bit of confusion here. Not really much you can do with this slow one second yeah. left on the shot clock. One second. Now, we have seen teams just really good positioning get it off. And out with one second, you can't pass. That first pass in has to go right to a shooter. Yeah. Even if your lane's not great, you got to hit the rim and keep the drive alive. Even and if she had have just gotten that ball up and mm -hmm. was able to get it to hit the rim, not even go in, they would have get, gotten more. Exactly. Time. You have something to work from, exactly, from there. Yeah. Here's Searles with the three, and that just rims out. Tough break for the, uh, the Vikings, rather. And now it's a long pass over to Dion. She's been open up that right flank all game long distributing back to teammates as they catch up. <coughs> Excuse me, here's Sophie Mitchell. She turns, gives it to Calder, the primary ball handler. Calder's going to drive in, shoot from mid-range, and that bounces out. Golden Knights have that as Sullivan using her height to her advantage. Here's Morrison with a drive in. Had to go by Calder, but comes back for that. And really rough jump ball there. As far as They definitely look like there could be some animosity there. Yeah, definitely. It's not two teams that you would expect um, to even necessarily really know each other because of yeah. the distance between the different uh, the difference between the distance between where these two teams are from. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll have a look at a map at halftime and yeah. give you some numbers. <laughs> but it's uh, it's it's about a f as far away as a couple teams on this side of the province can get. That's no good. Eden Searles has the rebound for the Vikings. Here she is trying to spark a comeback. She's had some good chances. Bumps in but gets it out to Calder for a three and that's good. Nice work by Marissa Calder. First three point, successful three point shot for either team tonight as Annie Morrison responds with two of her own here in the last minute of play. Ball put over to Calder. Calder brings it up. Has to get by Kate Toner, and she does. One to beat now. Shoots over her, and it's Marissa Calder putting the team on her back to try to drag the Vikings back into this thing. Nice to see a bit more of a competitive matchup here after a slow start, and Mitchell hanging on to that ball, and I think that's going to be a foul on Annie Morrison. Pleading her case to Rashida Atkinson, but she's not having it. Second foul for Morrison. As look, good news, Jenna McCarthy checking back into the game. So probably just some tough impact when she went down. Looks yeah, to be I moving assumed. okay. 
She did go down really hard, and that would have mm-hmm. hurt. We heard that up here. Instantaneously, <laughs> if it was, yep. I feel feel like if it was something that had of twisted or something, she would not have been able to get up and walk after exactly. that. Exactly, that's a little different. But this is pure impact as Searles tries to go up. Hayden Dion from behind, hanging on to that ball. Campabello take a shot here and 10 seconds left so no time on the shot clock back outside to Searles for three and it's good love to see it and this might be what Campabello needs as they pull back to within one great end to the first quarter we've got a game single A Southwest Regionals in the David McMullen Gymnasium and big thanks to Ashton Little. Not sure if we're showing some cool stuff. Is that a replay there? Not sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think you just saw a replay of that great last-minute three-point shot from Eden Searles. There's a big difference between ending the, fir- the first quarter down four and down one. Definitely, yeah. Take a moment to shout out some of the folks working down on the court as well to make the game possible. Big thanks to our minor officials over at the Don Fletcher Minor Officiating Booth. It's Holly Henry working the scoreboard, Violet McDonald on that 24-second shot clock, and Ali Sirwa checking things off on the score sheet. We'll shout out Holly Henry as well, one of our very own Lakers senior girls. The girls will be playing tomorrow. If you got any Lakers fans listening, they will be playing tomorrow at 10 a.m. here in the David McMullen Gymnasium. They are going to play the winner of Game 2 tonight, which starts at 8 p.m. That will be between the FCA Eagles and the Grand Manan Breakers. Here come the Knights. And the Vikings. As uh, sounds like some Viking fans in the stands for sure. Those Campobello Island parents are no stranger to the David McMullen Gymnasium. And it looks like we'll have some substitutions. Shylin Smart, grade 9 players checked into the game for the Vikings. As well as number 7, Maddie Cosman, also a grade 9 player. So some of the rookies getting some time here. As... Uh, I think it's still a mostly starting lineup for the Golden Knights as Searles taking another three. That goes out of bounds off the Vikings, so it'll be the Knights, and it looks like the uh, Vikings have uh, some kind of zone defense or full court press, not sure, as they're really turning it up on D, but the Knights get it over the line anyways. Here's Kate Toner, and that's disrupted by Eden Searles. They've eaten up half the shot clock already and the Knights aren't even at the three point line. Really nice defense. Coaches Julia Sound, uh, Sanders and Jeremy Mills must have had some good words for their team at quarter time. Let's see if they can take the lead now. Here's Jackson looking around. Gets it to Calder. Calder dribbling through a couple of defenders. Back outside to Jackson has Cosman who bounces into Searle on the inside. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Jackson takes the attempt. It's no good. Smart to Cosman. Back outside. Long two from Calder, and that goes into the hands of Hayden Dion for the Golden Knights. She has Kate Toner up the side. Kate Toner finds who I imagine must be her sister, Maria. Gets it to Jenna McCarthy. Back over to Sullivan. Sullivan turns and shoots, but that's no good. Shylin Smart has that rebound for Campabello. Here's Calder now, evading some defenders, but gets it over to Searles, to Cosman. Cosman defended well, but she gets that outside to Jackson. Searles now on the inside, driving and shooting from mid-range. That's good, as Searles is good for two. And here's uh, Kate Toner looking to respond. Ball gets away from her, though, as Maya Jackson brings it up. Has Marissa Calder. Over to Searles who shoots a three and it's good. And that is 10 points for Eden Searles. Two three-pointers as we're going to get a timeout called by Coach Aaron McLaughlin of the John Caldwell Golden Knights. 
That's fair. The, yeah. They are definitely turning up the uh, heat in this game. Definitely. Especially right after that quarter t uh, time. You really need these timeouts. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt, yeah. The Campobello on at least a 7-0 and run since uh, the end of the first quarter. Might be even more. I just know for sure they scored four and then three more at the end of this uh, Actually, no, sorry, check that. That's an 8 0 run because they were down four, 10 to 14, and now they're up 18 to 14. I believe so. they were at 13 at the end of the. They were, but they were down 10 before because oh, they got. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. So it's been at least eight points unanswered for the Campobello Vikings, which Definitely, is great for yeah. them, great for fans of the green and white, but not so much if you're tuning in from Grand Falls. And here we go. After a slow start. We're getting a great game here, and that's really the big difference. No three-pointers at all for the Golden Knights. I'm not even sure they have many attempts. No, whereas... I, I, they have not scored a single one, and I think they've had, like, maybe one or two attempts. Like, mm -hmm. But that's a last ditch. It just doesn't seem to yeah. be part of their game plan. They don't really... Campobello doesn't seem to really fear taking any mm -hmm. uh, three-point shots. They... They seem to like rely on them a little bit too. Oh, tough mental mistake there as uh, Jackson passing back to Calder. Didn't realize your teammate hadn't crossed the line. So that's an over and back. The attack over before it's begun. And let's see what the Golden Knights can do with this gift. They want to score coming out of the timeout. Let's see if they can. Kate Toner at the top of the line. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Looking inside for Sullivan. Maria Toner has that after it's been bounced away. And it's Maddie Cosman taking the rebound for the Vikings. Here's Jackson looking around. Has Searles at the inside. Searles calls for some help. Calder giving her some space with a pick there. Searles can't get in. Tries to, but I guess draws a foul, which is as good as. Yeah. You can Should definitely send Their division, is that what they would call it? Yep, yeah. yep, they'd be in the uh, Southern Division as Searle's first shot goes in. She is one for one from the line so far this evening. And a perfect two for two as we're going to get some personnel swaps. Madison Ryu and Annie Morrison checking into the game. Hayden Dion and Maria Toner taking a break. Morrison. Over to Ryu. Ryu outside to Sullivan. Sullivan trapped outside, looking in, but can't get through the Vikings. Shylin Smart gets that over to a teammate. And here's Calder bringing it over the line. Calder looking inside for Searles. Searles is driving through, loses her footing. No foul there, just unfortunate. As here come the Golden Knights on the response. Morrison looking over to Kate Toner. Toner driving in and there's a block. Eden Searles getting Ever since uh, this quarter has started, Campobello has barely let John Caldwell in to even get into to even get into the paint at all. Yeah. Yeah, Campobello has come out strong. There's Morrison dribbling around. She shoots for three, and that's no good. Smart looking over to Cosman, but it's fumbled away, and the Knights still have it. Here's Morrison again on the other side. She takes a few steps into the paint, and that's no good. Puts the ball out of bounds, and it'll be the Vikings taking over. Jackson to Calder. Calder now dribbling in. Looking all the way over to Searles. Searles fakes the three-pointers, drives around the perimeter, gets it to Jackson who shoots three, and that will fall just short. Searles trying to get to it and put it out of bounds off the defender, but just a split second too slow. So here come the Knights. They need a response. Still haven't scored this quarter. Ryu, guilty of a travel there. I thought it was a nice fake, I guess. Uh, the referees must have seen some foot movement as tough break for the Golden Knights. Here's Calder. Gets a pick set by Jackson. Calder with a spin move. 
McCarthy with her all the way, but still gets a shot off. It's no good, but that is off of Alyssa Sullivan, so the Vikings will maintain possession. Here's Shylin Smart putting the ball in, has Searles back to Smart. Smart going for the shot, but it's blocked by Alyssa Sullivan. It's always hard to tell from our angle, but Sullivan looks to be one of the tallest players on the court. Definitely, yeah. Uh, there's no shortage of tall players either, mm -hmm. especially on John Caldwell. Yep. Shot blocked away by the Vikings, so they have it here in the offensive zone. Calder gets it to Jackson. Back to Calder. Looking all the way across to Eden Searles. Searles has it now, and... Jumps out for a three-point shot. It's no good, but Jackson has the rebound. Kate Toner's going to punch that out of bounds, so three seconds on the shot clock. Campobello has this, but they're going to need they're going to need to put this in and get a quick, quick shot. Here's Smart. Looks to bounce inside, but it's taken over by Morrison. She has just Jackson to beat, and she does. Annie Morrison with eight points now, and that's what the... Golden Knights needed swing momentum back their way. They trail by two now. Oh, uh, by four? They trail by four. Yeah. Three-point shot attempt. That rolls out of bounds as the Vikings can't quite get there. So it is the Golden Knights and Vikings really turning on the heat with their defense. It's Kate Toner coming all the way back. The give and go to Morrison. Morrison driving in. Pulls up short and shoots from mid-range. It's no good, though, as the Vikings take over. You can see some of the fatigue for these girls. They've been playing 15 minutes straight, a lot of them. Yeah, no, I don't. There hasn't been many substitutions made by anyone in this uh, game so far, even though John Caldwell has four bench players. I don't really think that they've actually done many substitutions. No, no, just uh, as I didn't quite see what happened there. Searles, who's looking pretty fatigued, took that three-point shot about a few seconds later she was on the ground. I didn't see if there was any contact. I'm not sure. There's uh, no call. Who but, knows, but when you do get tired, you're mm -hmm. bound to just slip up, and that's the worst thing about how short their bench is. Yeah. Because their team is playing exceptionally. They've been able to pull ahead from a mm -hmm. pretty big point deficit towards the middle of the first quarter, and they managed to get it up to only one point. Yeah, they've done well pulling back into this they game, have, but yeah. that, uh, that is a shot clock violation. So even though the Vikings got that rebound, they can't do anything with it. They did not hit the rim. As uh, highlight a play early there. Nice work by Maddie Cosman, who drove in with speed to get an offensive rebound and a second chance. It's been uh, really just two players, Calder and Searles, scoring all the points for the Vikings. But if they can get some of those secondary scorers going too, they may be able to pull away with this. Especially with one of those top players, Searles. Starting to look tired out there. Here's Jackson driving in. Shoots from just outside the paint. That ball bounces around and we got a jump ball. It's Shylin Smart and Kate Toner wrestling for that. And it'll be Maria Toner putting this ball in for the Golden Knights. Here's Annie Morrison. She can drive. You'll have to watch her looking in. But Alexa pass this time to McCarthy. McCarthy had a good shot. It's no good, but the Knights still have the rebound. And nice work by Maddie Cosman again. Driving in. As it rolls out of bounds. Can't quite see who's got it, but referee... Atkinson is just going over the scorer's table. I don't think they're changing anything on the scoreboard. Just maybe verifying some timing. And it's Morrison who gets the ball for the Golden Knights. Here's Morrison. Over to McCarthy. Back to Kate Toner. Kate Toner, grade 11 player. Pivots around. Looks over for Maria Toner in grade 10. Here's Morrison shooting three and it's good. 
So she's in double digits, and the Golden Knights finally have a three-point shot. And that's an important part of their game to get going. Searles looks to respond, and she does with three of her own. Third. Nice pass block there from Maya Jackson. She's not on the board yet. As the timeout called. Not quite sure which side called that. Bit of momentum both sides. Let's see which way Rado Bay is pointing. And it is indeed John Caldwell. So Not much time left in this half, so no. might as well use up your yeah. uh, timeouts while you still have them. You can't take them with you. No, so. exactly. If, they, yeah. if you can't bring something over, you might as well use it. Exactly. And, and I think uh, that that's what they're thinking here. Mm -hmm. As well, they were able to get up three points. Mm -hmm. Campobello was immediately able to combat that with another... Yeah. Um, three points to return and one thing that I've noticed with John Caldwell that I haven't necessarily really noticed with Campobello is their passes their passes are a little like iffy some of them uh, can be quite off and they'll yeah. go over especially over um, the head of Jenna McCarthy and she's yeah. not a short player no they whatsoever. they do have a tendency to make those really high passes and it's not as fluid as no. um, a lot of the passes that we've seen mm -hmm. from from they, our own team here, even at Harvey, they do a lot of very far passes. The boys' teams do a lot of far passes, yeah. but these are just, they're not they're, precise enough. They're a little too arcing, yeah. and you've got to be really precise at the senior level for mm -hmm. sure. And even when they hit their arc a little too close to the player, mm -hmm. so it doesn't really land in their hands, and they more have to jump over. So, yeah. Stuff like this. Good and, example there. Yeah, yes. Searle's able, because she's able to read that pass, tons of time to react, reaches in and just able to bat that away gently. Bree Williams has checked back into the game. It's Maya Jackson looking for three. And that's no good. As Annie Morrison coming up with speed. Gets it over to McCarthy in the corner. McCarthy, that's a long two. Bounces around. It's no good. But Kate Toner's shot from behind is disrupted. Uh, we'll see which Viking player guilty of that foul. Definitely a foul, though. It looks like it's number seven, Maddie Cosman, her first. Yeah, that would be the first for her. They're, though they haven't gotten into, um, this is their first foul for their team in this um, yeah. quarter, so it's actually really surprising seeing as they had such a high We were We were of getting fouls. worried about I was them very in, worried, the, in yeah. the first, yeah, but it looks like it's okay, so. Kate Toner goes 0 for 2. She is now 2 for 4 from the line so far, the only player from Grand Falls to go to the line so far. Campabello. Calder has to get by a couple of defenders now. Looks like uh, John Caldwell switched up their defensive tactics. You like to see that, the adjustments from Coach Aaron McLaughlin. We'll see how the Vikings respond. Here's Searles. Eight seconds on the shot clock. They need to hit the rim. Williams inside, back outside to Jackson. She shoots a long shot. That'll reset the clock, although it will not go in, and I believe that's out of bounds. Uh... And Rod Obey with the call. That was tipped by a player in a gold jersey. So it's, uh, let's see, it must be Williams putting the ball in. Gets to Searles. Searles with a long two. And that falls out of bounds as shot clock goes, but we play on as the Knights had gotten the ball. First shot from Andy Morrison goes over the net. Second shot is low. So nothing going on that attack as here's Calder slowing things down. Over to Searles. Back to Calder at the top of the circle. Swung out to Jackson. Inside to Williams. Williams with a couple of defenders on her. Had them drawn and Searles snuck in. I don't know how she got there all alone under the net. But uh, who was that? I believe that was Jackson on the assist. Or possibly Calder got it in for an easy two as Searles standing up the defender or standing up as the defender, rather. Alyssa Sullivan trying to go in, and Searles just smacks that away, so. Looks like she's kind of caught her second win now as uh, Kate Toner right beside the net. There's another defensive breakdown, this time for the Vikings. Not sure how Kate Toner was able to get there, but primo scoring position. As here's Calder going in, and Sullivan stands her up. 
So we got a change in personnel. It'll be Kendra Purley. Listen is a grade eight player. Checking into the game, she wears number six mm -hmm. for the Golden Knights, so. Yeah, they have no grade nine players, only mm -hmm. one grade 10 player. They have a lot of grade 11s, yep. as well as a grade eight player who's on the court now. I, we, I don't think we really saw her the last game that we saw them play. I don't think so either. It would have been right at the beginning of the season. Yeah. Um, and so, so that's an intimidating yeah. time. Yep. And uh, as we were speaking there, Maya Jackson with a three-point shot. That's the fifth three-point shot from the Vikings. And Maya Jackson finally getting on the board. She's been a great distributor, good ball mover in the offensive zone all throughout the game. So nice to see that finally pay off. As we enter the final minute, it's Campobello up seven. And... Nice try there by Eden Searles to put it off the defender, but just a little too slow. As Obey, giving that to her. As uh, Vikings have the strong defense, but again, Kate Toner able to get open. Gets the ball over to Purley. Purley has Williams all over her. Can't quite get the ball out, and it's Maddie Cosman. With the steal, we got a foul call though. Let's see which way this is going. Getting that steal, so really nice tenacious play from one of the youngest players on this Viking squad. Number seven, Jackson. Back over to Calder. Calder trying to spin around and she does. Gets over to the line, dumps it out to Searles who shoots for three. And that's no good, McCarthy has the rebound. Long pass up to Kate Toner, or check that, Maria Toner, rather. Toner looks over to Morrison. Morrison evading some defenders. Over to Kendra Burley, who shoots for two. And the grade eight student is on the board. You love to see it for the Golden Knights. Crucial time, young players stepping up. Here's Calder, just seconds left. They need to take a shot, and we have an elbow there. Calder getting frustrated, and... Puts the elbow into the defender. That's the third foul on Marissa Calder. As Golden Knights will have the ball. They've only got a couple seconds. They'll have to work hard and good work by Calder batting that out there. So redeeming herself a bit. As 1.8 seconds on the clock here in the David McMullen Gymnasium. Big thanks to Holly Henry who's working that scoreboard and keeping an eye on the clock as well as your partners at the minor officiating table, Violet McDonald and Ali Sirwa. And there you go. So after two, it is 28 for Campobello, 23 for John Caldwell. Didn't think we'd be saying that about five minutes into no, this game. No, I wasn't sh I wasn't all too sure there. Yeah. They definitely were able to get up by a lot. Mm -hmm. But still, anyone's game, especially with yeah. Campobello, such a short bench. Marissa Calder taking her third foul right at the end of that quarter. Mm -hmm. um, that, that could is, be trouble. That did really worry me, actually, hearing mm -hmm. that even. Yeah. So we'll see how things go as uh, both teams head to the locker rooms. Before we go, we just shout out our sponsors. As we mentioned, those net cams were put up, and big thanks to everyone who worked. Kevin Sheffers Roy was uh, working overtime this week to get those up, as well as Ashton Little, who I think 3D printed some of the uh, the holders. Um, but big thanks to everyone, and the reason we're able to purchase that equipment is because of the generous help from our corporate sponsors, Scott Pierce at Remax East Coast Elite Realty and the Little Village Vacation Resort for Dogs. Um, they help us get more students involved, get those improvements like the score, uh, like the net cameras, like instant replay, just giving us some time and space to figure this all out and improve the viewing experience for you. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll take a break now, and we'll be back in about uh, seven minutes.
between me and my brothers we all around if it's going down it's just us all for one yeah you hearing right our business done we disappear into the night came up together so we all down for the fight ain't nothing wrong with that family ain't nothing strong as that and now be posted where the strongest at brothers by my side city on my back real heroes that's what the people want they ain't born got a creator saying we gone soon as we save them that's part of the plan by my side i'ma keep my brothers live or die man we need each other uh.
All right, folks, we got a couple minutes left of halftime between these two teams. If you're just joining us, it is game one of the Senior Girls Single A Southwest Regionals here in Harvey Station at the David McMullen Gymnasium. The Campobello Island Consolidated School Vikings are the second seed in the South. They went 8-2 and two in the regular season, dropping only a pair of decisions to the host Harvey Lakers. John Caldwell... Golden Knights are third in the West, and they went six and four. They dropped two to Southern Victoria, who are the undefeated top seed from the West, and they split their series with FCA. They must have lost another one to a different team, not sure which. As game is starting, and it will be Calder taking over for the Vikings. Vikings shooting from right to left on your TV screens, and it's Hayden Dion getting hands in there. We didn't see too much of her in the second quarter, but she was a disruptive force on defense for the Golden Knights. Nice pass from Morrison, who drove in looking for Alyssa Sullivan, but it's no good. And the Knights can't connect, but they do maintain possession. Here's Annie Morrison. She is the leading scorer for these Golden Knights. She's got 11 points on the evening. For the number two seed, it is the girl with the ball right now, Eden Searles leading the way. She's got 17 in the first half, nine of those coming off three-point shots. And that's been a big difference in these two games, or these two teams' games, rather, is the uh, ability to successfully shoot three-point shots. Here comes Morrison over to Kate Toner. Toner looking inside, but it's just over the hands of Sullivan. So the Vikings will take over. Jackson bouncing inside to Williams. We have a whistle. Not sure what this is. And uh, I think they're just checking a uh, something in the scoreboard. Not sure. I would assume, yeah. As it will be the Vikings putting it in the offensive zone. 19 seconds on the shot clock. Williams finds Jackson. Jackson to Calder at the top of the circle. Calder looking around. Has Searles on the inside. Searles turns and shoots. But that's no good. And it's out of bounds off of the attackers. So McCarthy will get the ball. Got away from referee Rod Obey for a second there. But he's got it again. Over to McCarthy to Morrison, who passes it over the heads of the defenders, over to Hayden Dion. Dion, and that's batted away. Knights still have it, no over and back because of the tip, but they've lost some valuable seconds. Excuse me, as here comes Calder. Calder shooting from mid-range, that bounces out, and Jackson can't quite get there in time. Here's referee Obey. And the Knights putting the ball in. Morrison out to McCarthy. McCarthy circling around, has Kate Toner on the inside. Toner back outside to Morrison. Morrison's gonna drive in. She lobs a shot sidearm, but it's no good. Sophie Mitchell has it, gets it over to Bree Williams. Williams is gonna dribble the ball over the line. Now slows things down, gets it to Calder as the rest of the Vikings set up. 
Here's Calder over to Jackson. Jackson inside to Williams. Williams back outside to Calder. Calder with a nice turn and underhand to Mitchell. Mitchell to Williams. Williams will shoot. It's no good, but Jackson on the rebound. And nothing going for the Vikings. So just two points scored by Campobello as we're over two minutes into the third quarter. These teams started pretty slow in the first quarter, yeah. but they did come alive as the game went on, and it's a steal by Calder. Here she is all alone, puts it up, and that's good for two. We haven't really seen many steals in this game so far yet. Not too many. Not, not a lot of successful no. ones anyways. There might be a steal, but it kind of just gets bobbled around. There's not much of an attack that yeah. leads from it. But. More attempted blocks, and then they just mm -hmm. end up going back to the original team. So... So with those two points, Marissa Calder has also hit double digits. She and Eden Searles are driving the bus offensively for the Vikings. Here's McCarthy. Over to, uh, looks like Sullivan. And sorry, we did have a foul there from Eden Searles, her first, as uh, the Vikings take their first foul of the quarter. Calder looking around. Puts it inside to Williams. Williams will dribble into the paint. Doesn't like what she sees. Gets it back to Calder for a three-point attempt. That bounces out, and it's Mitchell beating Dion to the ball. Campobello has it again. Up over the defender to Eden Searles. That's poked away by Dion, but Calder still has it. Here's Searles trying again. She tries to drive through a couple defenders, but this time it's the Knights who take it. Uh, Morrison, rather, trying to get through... And she's guilty of a charge there. Rashida Atkinson making that call, and the Campapello crowd loves it. I'd say we definitely have more uh, live fans from Campabello here yeah. than, uh, than fans who made the trip from Grand Falls. Oh, I don't know if they brought a bus down. I didn't really see one outside. Oh, they so have. It might be a bunch of parents that brought them down. I would expect so. We yeah. know Campobello, they, they do like their basketball there. Definitely, they like to support yeah. Their sports They're very teams. competitive, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. But well, we welcome them here in the David Mellon Gymnasium, Definitely. as all teams' fans are. And if you're a fan of either of these squads or a neutral fan, we thank you regardless for tuning in. We do appreciate mm -hmm. it. I do, uh, during the last Campobello game, I believe they did come here, yes. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me, yeah, because yeah, both the boys and the girls were coming, there so were, it would have made sense. Uh, there were quite a bit of uh, fans in the bleachers yep. for them. Yep. Always a good showing from the Campobello Island fans as a couple of girls go up. Hayden Bion went down hard. No foul, though, as Campobello disrupts that attack. Nice give and go from Williams to Mitchell, who takes a shot. It falls just short. But good to see some of the Campobello bench players getting in on the action. Underneath the net, it's Sullivan. Passed just a little too much mustard. She does keep it in bounds, though. Good work as she goes up and again keeps the drive alive. Three-point shot attempt from Dion will bounce out as Toner on her way back just disrupting. Really nice disruptive play, and that is one thing that John... A lot of uh, John Caldwell's plays, which is how they've gotten a lot of their points. They're also exceptionally good at ball handling. A lot of their players are, I've noticed at least. Here's Calder with the turn and shoot. A nice little spin move, but doesn't come away with any points to show for it. Now it's Morrison the other way. She stops short and puts in two. So continues to be the leading scorer for these Golden Knights. Grade 11 player, wearing number seven. Here's a turn and shoot from Mitchell and it goes in. Grade 10 player getting on the board. You'll love to see it, she's the fourth Viking to score. As we have a long shot from Dion, that'll fall just short, but Morrison has it under the net. McCarthy outside to Dion, over to Sullivan who goes in and Williams reaching in, that's gonna be a foul. Sullivan. Sullivan, six points so far, but none from the line. No opportunities. Uh, this is her first time at the line. As that is Williams' second foul of the night. She must have been the one 
who got that foul in the first quarter that we missed. Yes, I would believe so. Definitely not good to see some other players with two or three fouls. Yep. It's on a lot of them that play the most, too. Something you would you want expect. To watch out for. Yeah. Yep. Although they did get some good play out of Shylin Smart and Maddie Cosman off the bench, so. Definitely. It's yeah. not that they don't have a good bench, it's just so shallow with only two yeah. reserve players right now. Williams has it after a little melee, and the Vikings will get the counter attack. Calder stops for a long two-point shot attempt. It's no good, but Re Williams has the rebound. Passes it to Jackson, who shoots three. That bounces out, but again, Williams on the rebound. Over to Jackson for a clean shot from the elbow. That's no good, and finally, John Caldwell has that. Williams trying to reach in to bounce it away, but Annie Morrison has that under control. She's one of those skilled ball handlers we were talking about on the Knights. Mm -hmm. Here's Calder, brings the ball over. Slowing things down, lets her teammates get into position. She's gonna watch things develop. 16 seconds on the shot clock. Driving around, spin move, and looks for Jackson, but that pass just a little too much mustard. Thankfully, Eden Searles is there. She turns, twists, and drives in for two points. Maintaining an eight point lead here for the Vikings. Here's Morrison who stops up short, looking for three, she's the only Golden Knight to shoot a three. Bit of a jump ball here. And it'll be Hayden Dion putting the ball in to the offensive zone. And whistle as ball poked out of bounds. We got 3.29 left to play as we go through some technical difficulties with the scoreboard. It is Campobello 34 and the Golden Knights 26 as foul called here, I believe, anyways. Although I could be wrong. No, might just be out of bounds. That's my bad. Referee Atkinson handing the ball off to the Vikings as it'll be Calder getting the ball. The lone grade 12 player on this Campobello squad, you can tell she wants the win here in this playoff game as she's twisting all the way by Morrison, looking inside for Searles, but it's locked, blocked away nicely by Dion. Those two have been battling all night long as we get a toner to toner give and go. Maria taking the shot, but it's no good. Back out to Maria now. Over to Morrison, well outside the circle, Morrison. Drives in, but then passes it out to Ryu. Ryu fakes the shot, gets by the first defender, looks inside, but it's batted away by Calder for the Vikings as they thwart that attack from the Golden Knights. Calder slowing things down again. 2.43 left to play here in the third quarter. Vikings still ahead by eight. Looking inside, Searles bounces that to herself, and she goes up. Called for a foul. It is the first foul on Maria Toner. And that'll send Eden Searles to the line. She's two for two. First shot will bounce out. So two for three from the line. As she puts it in, Morrison and Dion getting ready to box out for the Golden Knights. Ball is up, and it's good. Three for four from the line. Four for six as a team are the Vikings so far tonight. Nice movement inside as Ryu got open. Elected to give the ball out, and they're kind of skittering around the boundary right now are the Knights. And it's taken over by the Vikings. No points on that attack. 35-26 is your score. 2-10 left to play. As Shylin Smart has the ball, she's checked into the game for the Vikings. Bray Williams has taken a breather. And here's Calder looking around, five seconds on the shot clock, but I don't know if they'll be able to use it. Ball rolls out of bounds, and it was off the leg of a Viking. Nice tenacious work by Hayden Dion. She's not on the scoreboard, but she's been doing a great job disrupting as uh, Atkinson just, referee Atkinson just checking the safety of that floor. Morrison 
over to Toner. Toner shooting three, and it's good. That goes in clean. The Knights needed that. As here, as we are in the final two minutes of play in the third quarter, they start to close this gap. Here's Calder driving in, has a clear path. Can't make it pay though, ooh, that's gonna sting. You're gonna want those two points later on. As here comes Morrison looking to really respond and she goes hard into number eight, Sophie Mitchell. Morrison, she's the leading scorer by a good chunk for the John Caldwell Golden Knights. And I think we're gonna get a substitution here. Coach Aaron McLaughlin is gonna keep that one of his best players in reserve now, so. Yeah, you're gonna wanna save her for towards the end of the game if anything happens. That, yeah. That's tragic that for the team. Could be a big could be a big deciding factor here for John Caldwell. Tough loss. But let's see how the rest of these veteran players kind of pull back together. Pass intercepted by Shailene Smart. Good eye from the rookie player out of Campobello Island as Calder has the ball now. 12 seconds on the shot clock. It's Eden Searles under the net. Turns and shoots it. Rolls around the rim but falls out. And Kate Toner gets it over to Sister Maria. Maria Toner and oh that ball almost batted away but Kate Toner is there and we have another charge. The call is the call. The Vikings definitely know how to farm for these fouls now at this point. They might. I mean, they're getting in position, and that was yeah. Sophie Mitchell, and we've got referees Obey and Atkinson discussing. We'll see what comes of this as Obey, who made the call, is going to go over to Coach Aaron McLaughlin and kind of clarify things. We'll wait to see what goes up on the scoreboard. Actually, the foul's already there. It is the first for Kate Toner. We'll see if that stays there. If it does, it would be the fourth foul for the Vikings, or the Golden Knights, rather, in this quarter. That's not very good. Uh, though it isn't, there isn't a huge difference in points here with it being 35 to 29. It's not impossible for mm -hmm. the Golden Knights to come back. If the Knights were were more of a prolific three-point shot team, yeah, if they I might were be a little to, more scared. Yeah. But they just haven't been shooting those. They I don't know if really they can. Been that's the thing. You're right. They all. haven't been trying. Yeah. And, that's and it might just not be part of their game. We don't see them yeah. very often. Well, that's else. the sort of thing that you, um, you see from a team that is more scared of taking those three-point shots. Yeah. If you don't think you can make them, why mm -hmm. would you tr try and to take them at all? One of the two players who did successfully take one, Annie Morrison, she's on the bench right now with four fouls. So that foul has stayed on the board. As back to Kate Toner. She's got the ball and loses her footing, guilty of a travel there. That's just a tough break. I think they might have taken it off. There's only three fouls now for... Oh, you're correct. You're yeah. correct. Yeah, it's a zero for ten. So, no, thank you for that call. Good call. It's hard to see right now yeah. from where I'm standing, but... We don't have a great vantage yeah. point of the official scoreboard. That's why we need big props to Austin Jameson, keeping our scoreboard up to date. It has most everything, but it does not tell you which players committed the fouls that are going on the board. So no. that's where we have to look at the gym. And trust our minor officials. They are great minor officials. Big thanks to Holly Henry, Violet McDonald, and Ali Sierwa. It's a three-point attempt from Dion. That falls out, but that is what they need if you're a fan of the team from Grand Falls. Here comes Calder looking to widen the gap. Falls short, but Shylin Smart came in for the rebound. Nice play by Smart as that shot from Mitchell is over. And big long pass picked off. Just like we were talking about earlier, those dangerous passes. almost always likely to be intercepted by any semi-smartish player. You don't no. even really need to be a super experienced player to see an opening and take that. If you're in the right position, it can and I sometimes find, just be given to you. Yeah, it, and I find that a lot of the players um, on John Caldwell's team often sort of like skid away from the ball a little bit. They don't run towards it. I've seen this even when they're up by the net and a player is going to try to take a shot there or try to take the ball away from them, they sort of back off rather than 
go harder and try to get it before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with the fourth quarter of a playoff game and their season on the line, we'll see how these two teams come out. Yeah. Before we do, though, big thanks once again to our corporate sponsors. We'd like to thank Scott Pierce at REMAX, East Coast Elite Realty, and the Little Village Vacation Resort for Dogs. Our sponsors help us to improve the viewing experience and get more students involved in these streams. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor, please check the video description for our contact information. Should also shout out some of the folks up here in the Skybox working behind the scenes. We mentioned Austin Jameson earlier. He's keeping our scoreboard on the stream up to date. Big thanks as well to Kevin Sheffers Roy working the camera and Ashton Little, who's been controlling all the graphics you're seeing, all the transitions, the cuts to different camera angles, and just working everything up at the console. So. Big thanks to all those folks working behind the scenes. And for you, the viewer, for tuning in. We really appreciate it, especially for these neutral games. But uh, the more views we have, the more it helps. And hopefully we can get these kind of programs into other schools as well, which we'd love to do. Fourth quarter of a playoff action here. One of these two teams will play tomorrow at noon against the Southern Victoria Vikings. The other season will be over. So this is it. As Hayden Dion comes in, just one girl to beat, and she does. Hayden Dion's on the board. She's been a defensive force all night. Love to see her getting in on the offensive side of the scoreboard as well. Golden Knights pulled it within four. Calder looking around, finds Searles. Searles driving around the corner. Doesn't like her shot, so tries to pass over to Jackson, but disrupted well by the Golden Knights. 10 seconds on the shot clock as Shylin Smart has stayed out there for the Vikings. Grade 9 player. And she's going to get that over to, it looks like, Calder. Ball's on the ground now, and we've got a jump ball. See, John Caldwell is doing exactly what they need to do. What I was talking about during uh, halftime, they're not being so scared of the ball anymore. They're rushing mm -hmm. into these plays. I think they realize that they could get this game. They could steal this game away. Oh, without a doubt, either of these two teams could very well walk away with the victory here. Yes. Here's a three-point shot from Ryu, number five for the Golden Knights. And that's a jump ball. Mitchell and Dion getting into it. And it looks like it'll be Campobello taking over in the defensive end. But, oh, uh, no, check. Uh, not sure, actually. <laughs> a lot of confusion here. But eventually it is Smart who goes over for the Vikings and gets the ball. And looks like a full court press here from the Golden Knights. But Calder, some nice reverses, gets the ball up. Maya Jackson. Looks over to Mitchell, back outside to Jackson. Jackson shoots for three, and that falls just short. She was a really strong player when she played against the Lakers earlier this season. This would be the perfect time for her to rediscover her scoring touch. Eden Searles with the knockaway. Nice work by the grade 11 player for the Vikings. She is the leading scorer for both teams. 20 points to her name. Nine of those coming off three-point attempts. Although she hasn't really shot much from the three-point line in this half. And there's a long two from Marissa Calder. Mitchell keeps that alive. Nice stretch from number eight for the Vikings, but it's stolen away. Hayden Dion has it, gets it out to Ryu, and the Knights have it in the offensive zone. And a steal here by Calder. She's off and running, just Dion to beat. And that goes out of bounds. Odd man rush. Odd player rush, I guess. <laughs> Here's Searles putting it in, finds Calder. Calder circling around the perimeter. She's going to shoot for three. And that's no good. Ryu leaning in to get that ball. And it's Hayden Dion. Dion finds Sullivan all alone under the net. Sullivan caught in a bad position with momentum. Has to get it out to Ryu for a long two. Sullivan trying to get the rebound, but there's a push, and looks like it's going against Sullivan. It's definitely going against John Caldwell based on the reaction from the Vikings bench. And here's Calder bringing the ball up. Quarter of the way through this fourth quarter. Searles driving around the perimeter. She turns and shoots at the foul line. 
but that will fall short. And I think she wants a foul call or just stretching her arm. But we've got a swap in personnel here. Annie Morrison, leading scorer for the John Caldwell Golden Knights, has checked back into the game. If they want to get back into this thing, I think they're going to need her. Here she comes. Gets it over to Ryu. Kate Toner in the corner. High pass up to Morrison. Morrison driving in and then gets it out to Dion who shoots three. And that's no good. Maya Jackson has the rebound. Jackson bringing the ball over. Has Calder at the top of the circle. Calder looking around. Tries to get some help, but Kate Toner with her all the way. Gets by her though with a nice twist. That ball just needed a little more mustard to get over the rim. And here's Hayden Dion now. Just uh, waiting for a shoe to get tied, but we're all good now. Rod Obey is waiting for the signal from Rashida Atkinson. He has it. So the game is on. Here's Maria Toner trying to get by Searles, and she does. Toner looking around, doesn't like what she sees. Swung out to Morrison in the corner, and Kate Toner has it back inside to Morrison, under the net, over to Dion. Back up talk to Ryu, four seconds on the shot clock. John Caldwell needs to shoot. Here it is from Dion, and it's good for two. And the John Caldwell fans are making themselves heard. I guess they didn't come alone from Grand Falls. As they pulled within four, still anyone's game here in game one of the Southwest Single A Regionals. And driving over, but we've got a foul called. I believe that's Eden Searles reaching over. Let's see what referee Obey is going to get them to put on the board. As we have a timeout called. See which way referee Atkinson puts it. It is Campobello calling their first timeout of the second. Actually, both teams, I think, first timeout of the second half. Yeah, did I John Caldwell use one in the third quarter? I'm not entirely I sure. So. I don't think they did, though. But no. good uh, time to use it, honestly, mm -hmm. with yep. only six minutes left, and John Caldwell has been able to get up a few more points there. The score now is now 37-33 in favor of the Vikings, but mm -hmm. that's only four points different. That's two more um, two points. Two possessions and you're done. Yeah, they're definitely knocking on the door, and still lots of time to play. Things could really mm -hmm. go either way. Lots it of really X could. factors here. We've got leading score for John Caldwell, Annie Morrison with four fouls. Le uh, one of the leading players for Campobello with three. Marissa Calder, really short bench, just an injury away from potential disaster. Um, so. Really, really precarious game for both sides, Def without yeah, a doubt. definitely. And buzzer is sounded. Big thanks to our minor officials down there at the Don Fletcher Minor Officiating Booth. Holly Henry is working the scoreboard. Ali Sirwa checking things off on the score sheet. And Violet McDonald doing one of her favorite things in the world there, sounding that buzzer. She's also working the 24-second shot clock. And it will be Kate Toner putting the ball in for John Caldwell. Annie Morrison's going to start the rush. Morrison over to Toner. Toner with the three-point shot. Maria Toner. And that's her second successful three-point shot. And now the Golden Knights are within one. We've got a game as ball tipped away by Hayden Dion. But Shylin Smart's there to maintain it. And Maria Toner diving to push that away. Good plays all around. Even if you're not able to fully get possession, it's able to knock off the Vikings off of their game. She was able to hit it out further away from uh, the paint as well, so they're not able to get in as easily, especially with defense we're see like we're seeing from Annie Morrison. Here's Searle. Just can't get a good shot off. Good defense from Ryu and Toner, but she gets her own rebound. Nice tenacity from Eden Searles, leading scorer for both teams. As here's Annie Morrison looking to respond, gets it to Maria Toner. Maria Toner has a couple of three-point shots to her name. Has to send a long lob pass over to Dion. Gets it to Ryu in the corner. Morrison now in the paint. That bounces out, and it's Calder and Toner. Dusting it up for a jump ball. And we'll see who maintains possession is 
I'm not sure if this is a foul. Rod Obey over to the minor officials table. We'll see what gets called. I think it's just resetting. Yep, it is resetting indeed the 24 second shot clock. As one of those did hit the rim. I think that was Morrison's attempt. And we're going to get a timeout called here by John Caldwell. Both teams with uh, two timeouts remaining now. Mm -hmm. And I expect we'll see them use them. Definitely, yeah. There's there's no reason really to not when you're in a game this tense. Five minutes left. 39-36. They only now need one three-point shot, a few two points. They're... And we've seen John Caldwell, especially in this, especially in this fourth quarter and second half, be able to get some three-point shots. Yep, yep. They're they're finally kind of working that aspect of their game into yeah. their toolbox at just the right time. Of course, we know Campobello can respond with some threes of their own. So we'll have to see how both these teams work those into their strategy here as we enter the second half of the fourth quarter. And just a reminder, this is do or die for these teams. The winner will survive and play game four against the Southern Victoria Vikings at 12 p.m. tomorrow. The loser will be going home as this is an elimination game. Make sure you stay tuned after. We've got game two of regionals. The two seed from the West FCA, the Fredericton Christian Academy, is going to take on Graham Manan. Ball goes up, but it will not go in from Dion. Tough break for the Knights. She did uh, get a good steal there, though. Yeah, she's been great on defense. Really, it's just a real yeah. shame that uh, hasn't put up more points because she's taken some good shots. Mm -hmm. Calder driving in, gets it out to Searles, who shoots for three. It's no good, but Jackson on the rebound. That's not good either. And Andy Morrison has the ball on the rebound. A couple of players to beat, gets it over to Maria Toner. Toner with the nice head fake, but... Calder stays with her for defense all the way. Morrison driving through a couple of players, takes a mid-range attempt, it's no good. And Mitchell has that rebound, gets it over to Searles. Here's Calder over the line. Gets it over to Maya Jackson. Jackson, grade 10 player, we know what she's capable of. Saw it against the Lakers. Three-point shot falls short. Searles now driving in over to Mitchell from the elbow. And that's no good. Ball poked out. And I believe that's going to go off the hands of Jackson. So it should be the Golden Knights who maintain. Oh, no. Check that. Guess it was off a defender. So Golden Knights have the ball in the ozone. Uh, not sure if we're getting a foul called here. Referee Obey talking to Atkinson, talking to the... Minor officials table, but I think we're all good. Oh, I think it was 14 seconds they were setting on the clock. Shot clock, rather. Eden Searles with the turn and shoot. That's good for two. And here's Morrison needing to respond. Over to Dion. Inside for Alyssa Sullivan, who can't get it by Searles. And that's off of Searles, so John Caldwell hangs on to it. 14 seconds on the shot clock. And let's see where they go from here. Nice movement inside by Kate Toner. Good C from Morrison. And she drove in all alone. Kind of delayed a little bit off the set play. And now it's Jackson. Almost had that ball stolen. But they still have it. Called her for three. It's no good. Jackson still has it though. Shoots from mid-range. That falls out and rebound batted away. It falls out of bounds now. As here comes Annie Morrison. Morrison over to Kate Toner. Kate Toner over to Maria. Maria, she's gotten a couple of threes. Can she get another? Not this time, but Morrison has the rebound. Should have reset the shot clock, I think. As Toner looking up and around, and that's out of bounds. So nothing on that attack. As time is running out here for John Caldwell. Three minutes, they need three points. Still very doable, but mm -hmm. that clock's ticking away. It's not their friend. Girls get in position as here's Andy Morrison. Morrison bringing the ball up. He's gonna get it over to Maria Toner. Toner shoots for three and that will fall short. 
Nice box out there from Searles making sure that no one could touch it. So the Vikings get possession here. So we have, look to have a bit of a press. Calder does get it over the line though and now she's driving in. Dumps it out to Searles who shoots for three and it's good. Searles finally getting that part of her game going here in the second half. And Sullivan needs to respond. Got twisted up there, called for a travel now. And this Campobello Island crowd really loving that. Lots of fans who took that ferry trip or maybe came through the States, I don't know. Jackson over to Calder. Calder inside to Searles who reaches out to corral that pass. Shot falls a little short and the Golden Knights have it. Here's Kate Toner up to Maria Toner. Toner stops, she's got three girls on her, but gets it over to Maria who was coming in under the net. Nice work by Williams to block the first one, but I think she's gonna get called here on a foul for the second. Let's see what referee Atkinson is calling. Eight, uh, no, check that, that'll be Mitchell, Sophie Mitchell with her first infraction. Second for John Caldwell, but this sends Kate Toner to the line. She is two for four so far. First shot is up, and it just rims out. That's a tough break. And Searles came in early. She's done that a few times. Yeah, she has. I, If they were giving out fouls for that, yeah, then... <laughs> it wouldn't be good news. It would not be. For number 12. I think she's. I think that's her third or fourth time doing that, yeah. actually. Yeah, definitely has the momentum, but... Uh, you don't really... I've never really seen that happen in a lot of other games, Not actually. repeatedly. No. I've seen it in isolated times, but yeah. yeah, definitely not as a habit. I think we saw that, like, once from a, the most recent boys game or something. I think yeah. that was one of the... One of the, like, under five times I've seen it this season, but mm -hmm. three times one game is... Yeah, yeah. An interesting quirk, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Very Luckily, strong nothing comes from player, it. but yeah. All right, that is the third foul against Eden Searles. Must have missed one earlier, but this is going to send Alyssa Sullivan to the line. She's one for two, as that one falls short. And gets to go again. It's Searles and Calder boxing out. Maria Toner and Alyssa, uh, Annie Morrison, rather. Looking to get that, but it's no need. Alyssa Sullivan maintaining that 50% rate from the line. She gets one for the Knights who needed that. One and a half minutes left to play. Two possession game. Knights need five. Searles looks to widen that gap. Get some insurance. It's no good. Jackson goes up for some breathing room and loses the ball there. So crucial, crucial possession here for the Knights. And a whistle. I wouldn't have... Oh. Yeah, yeah, I was expecting to see a timeout here. Yeah. If there's any time to draw up a play, this would be it. Definitely. 122 on the clock, playoff game. Your team trails by five. Let's see what the Knights are able to cook up from head coach Aaron McLaughlin. Definitely not a super far game, but it's it's going to be rough to get there with how uh, Campo is playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both teams uh, still with some timeouts in their pocket. Coaches mm -hmm. Julie Sanders and Jeremy Mills from Campobello have two left. And after this one, Air McLaughlin will still have one. Yeah. So it may not be the last timeout we see in this close playoff game. No, I expect something. Uh, I expect that they won't just dribble the ball out in this game. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. Not in the playoff game. No, definitely not. Maybe and if they there was a little bit of a bigger lead there, but there really isn't. It's actually a pretty low scoring game. It, it, it was, I think those slow starts are a big part of it for yeah, sure. Yeah, especially if you start off really strong with a lot of points, then you're mm -hmm. going to usually get a lot of points. The momentum will keep you going forward for the sure. First, uh, the first and third quarter are definitely very telling quarters. Mm -hmm. Though I'm not, I never would have guessed that this is how the game would have gone from no. even the third quarter. It surprised me. Here's Annie Morrison. Outside to Dion. Dion's going to shoot for three. It'll fall short, and that's off of Alyssa Sullivan. Tough break for the Golden Knights. Let's see what they've got on defense now. As 
Vikings are going to look to put it in. 112 on the clock. Calder. If they and we got a foul here. And I believe that's on Morrison. And that's a tough break as that should be Morris. It is indeed Annie Morrison's yeah. fifth foul. And that's really tough for a great, great 11 player. She had an excellent game. She did, definitely. I, I can see why she did get all those fouls. It's mm -hmm. Playing when you're hard. Pl when you, yes, exactly. When you play as uh, hard as she did and as many minutes as she did, yeah. basically all of, I'd say, all yeah. of the first half she was on. Yeah, yeah. Both teams leaning pretty heavily on their starters. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. she was definitely one of them for the Golden Knights. So they're in tough now. Yeah. As Aaron McLaughlin kind of calms his squad. They get a free timeout with this, though, so mm -hmm. that may help draw up a play. This, uh, I don't think it, no, it does not. It doesn't even nearly put the Vikings into bonus, so you definitely don't have that strategic aspect of fouling, sending them to the line, and then getting possession. Yeah, the Golden Knights no. still need a steal here if they want to take the clock back. Looks like a strong press here. Searles looking for Jackson and finds her. Jackson has the ball. Kate Toner or Maria. Nope, that's Kate Toner rather all over her, but we almost had a steal. Calder steals it right back over to Searles who got open for a three and it's good. And timeout now by John Caldwell. Less than a minute to go. Team down by eight and that was a game changer. Yeah, that that is not something really... It's super easy to come back from. Yeah, and check that out. Might not actually be a timeout. Not sure what's going on. I'm not sure Referee either. Referee Obey talking to Coach Mills of the island over there. Oh, it sending Maria Toner to the line? Not sure what that's all about. Falls out. I have... There's definitely no... Bonus. Oh, no, uh, Marissa Calder, fourth foul, so might have oh, been something she huh. said. I'm not sure what happened there. Could have been, yeah, could have been some aggression. Or something. Yeah, very interesting. Here's Toner. They've got to move quickly now. Still down by eight. Sullivan outside to McCarthy to Maria Toner. Toner looking around. Has Kate Toner. Kate Toner shoots for three. That bounces out. Dion looking for the rebound. We got a jump ball. And she gets into it with Searles. 38.9 seconds left to go. And here's Searles now. Calling for some movement. We'll put the ball up into Calder, who spins around. Calder trying to drive through. We got a foul. I believe this is going against one of the Knights. Tried to drive through Dion and Maria Toner. We'll see which of them. I uh, believe number one. So Maria Toner should be her second. Oh, no, check that. One, one. <laughs> that is Hayden Dion's number, her third. So this is send Calder to the line. She's one for two. First shot will bounce out. Second shot now. McCarthy and Sullivan ready to box out on this crucial shot. And it comes all the way out to Dion. And she has that long pass over to Maria Toner. Toner slowing things down. Gets it over to Dion, who's going to shoot for three, and it's no good. That falls just wide. And here's Eden Searles. Whistle now as we have a foul. And by the looks of it, I think Maria Toner, the guilty party. Uh, no, Alyssa Sullivan? I didn't see her near the play, but oh, I guess, yeah. We don't always have the best vantage point from up yeah, here, especially no. the things happening at the close sideline. We can't really see r directly underneath us, so. Not sure what that is there. Not sure what the call from referee Atkinson, who was, again, kind of underneath where we are. Fourth foul on Sullivan? Again, I didn't see one, but. I, yeah. I really didn't see one either, and if, the, are they at five fouls now? That would put them in the that bonus. Does, yeah, so very quickly. Capabello's gone into bonus, and with a point there, Bree Williams getting on the board. This will probably do it for the team from Grand Falls. 
Ball is up. It's no good, but Searles has the rebound. She's going to bounce it out. They'll keep fighting this through the end. Here's Searles dribbling around. Can't get by Dion and Maria Toner. It's Maya Jackson with the ball now. Over to, who's that? Mitchell and coming in a little too strong is Kate Toner. Knocked her over from behind there. And that will send Williams to the line. So 2.3 seconds left, and this game is wrapped up, more or less. We'll just see the final score, but the result is not in question. Ball rims out for Sophie Mitchell. And let's see the next one. Second shot up and good. So... Little pile on there as Hayden Dion goes for the buzzer beater. But it won't make a difference at the end of four quarters. Campobello 49, John Caldwell 39, and the Campobello Island Consolidated School Vikings have won the first game here at the Senior Girls Southwest Regionals. They will go on to face the formidable Southern Victoria Vikings. We've got a Viking on Viking matchup. That game will happen at 12 p.m. tomorrow with a trip to sectionals on the line. Mm -hmm. Good game from both teams. Definitely. As uh, teams shake the hands of the referees. Big thanks to Rashida Atkinson and Rod Obey for officiating tonight as well. Do some final shout outs before we get ready for our next game. Big thanks to Violet McDonald, Holly Henry, and Ali Sirwa down at the Don Fletcher minor officiating table. Uh, big thanks to Coach Aaron McLaughlin of John Caldwell, as well as Julie Sanders and Jeremy Mills for Campobello. Up here in the skybox, Austin Jamison ran the scoreboard. Kevin Sheffers Roy pointed us in the right direction with the camera, and Ashton Little has got all those picture, uh, or um, not pictures, but graphics rather, up on the stream at the console position. Big thanks to you as well, Cecilia Pauly. Thanks to you. Not a problem, and make sure you tune in at 8 p.m. It'll be game two of regionals. FCA is taking on Graham and Ann, and the winner of that game will be playing Harvey at 10 a.m., so our Lakers faithful are going to want to tune in for that one. Thanks, and we'll see you at 8 p.m. <laughs>